This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Thursday, June the 20th, 2019. It's the feast of Pope St. Silvarius, whose life was a series of gotcha moments one after another. So his dad was Pope, Hormizdus the Only, but Silvarius was born before his dad was ordained a priest, so he was a legitimate child. Silvarius was one of those who was ordained as a deacon one day, the priest the next, and then Pope the following Wednesday kind of thing, because Rome in the mid-500s AD was the definition of chaos. The Roman Empire was collapsing, actively collapsing, and the papacy was taking some hard punches as a result. Historians might be able to keep all this clear in their heads, but for the rest of us, the really short version is that the last Roman emperor in Rome was Romulus Augustulus, who died in 476 AD. A warlord named Odoacer took over and was the first in a string of one-off leaders of Rome until the Goths set up shop. A lot of popes at this time died very violent deaths. When Pope Silvarius was elected, a warlord king named Theo de Had was running the city. Now, the new pope flashed the bat signal, and a Byzantine general named Belisarius appeared in Rome to try to bring some order. Nuttiness ensued, and the pope, who was trying to bring peace, found himself exiled to the modern-day city in Turkey where St. Nicholas was born. Silvarius died a few months later after less than two years in the chair of St. Peter, but with a crazy biography behind him. He was declared a saint by popular acclamation and is still celebrated, strangely enough, in the Bronx in New York City, where Greek immigrants from the island of Ponza commemorate miraculous appearances of Pope St. Silvarius, saving sailors from storms. It's Pope St. Silvarius for the win in the category of wacky life stories. Today in 1975, the first ever summer blockbuster was released when a new film from director Steven Spielberg hit theaters. The story was simple enough. A dangerous shark was spotted off the coast of a fictional New England town. The money-grubbing mayor refused to close the beach, and so the brand new sheriff and his ragtag group of locals have to kill the beast on their own. The music and the one-liners are iconic now, but at the time there was no reason that this film should be any more successful than Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. But for whatever reason... The stars aligned, and it was the highest-grossing film of that time. Now, Jaws was released in 1975, Star Wars in 77, Alien in 79, and then came Indiana Jones, E.T., Ghostbusters, Beverly Hills Cop, Back to the Future, Top Gun, and on and on until Marvel reinvented the genre film with the invention of a continuous cinematic universe. The phenomenon of a summer blockbuster hasn't been all peaches and cream, though. It's required production houses to go all in on one or two, quote, tent pole productions, and that's bankrupted whole studios when a production that costs half a billion dollars flops in theaters, as was the case with movies like Titan A.E., Heaven's Gate, and Superman 4. In the vein of great films and really, really bad ones, today is the birthday in 1909 of legendary swashbuckler Errol Flynn. He was an Aussie who died young, but who lived in the golden age of Hollywood. He started out in Captain Blood in 1935, which was a hit and rocketed him to the top of the so-called stable of Warner Brothers' leading men. It was 1938's The Adventures of Robin Hood for which Flynn would be most famous. His swordplay and his charisma were second to none, and the movie made a mint for the studio. Strangely, rather than leave well enough alone, Warner Brothers cast him in a variety of genres, including medical dramas, screwball comedies that called for vaudevillian slapstick timing, but which never really worked for him. Flynn was in a lot of films and was a very talented actor, but he'll always be remembered as the definitive Robin Hood. At least until Kevin Costner came along. Not. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.